Okay, so now going to a finite dimensional perspective. So this is, a, we are still in the weak form. This is all can be infinite dimensional. So going into a finite dimensional, we are basically still forcing our u and g to have satisfying the same weak form. But then in the finite element uh, framework, then we are restricting ourselves to g now this is zero with a non. Uh, so now we are restricting our g to x h, a finite dimensional space that actually uh, is a subspace of this x zero. And also we are restricting ourselves to um, uh, for some u within this x bc of h which is within this bigger space this infinite dimensional space now both my x 0 h and x bc h has to be finite dimensional and they are so for for this to be qualified as a galerkin method so remember when we have a zero distribution boundary condition the galerkin method requires the two spaces for G and U to be the same. And in this case, they cannot be the same because they actually belong to different spaces. So for Gerlachy method, in this case, X zero H needs to be the homogeneous version of X B C H. Needs to be the homogeneous version of x b c h what does that mean that means x 0 h should be equal to all the spaces of u minus v for any u and v within this x b c h all right so x b c h is a finite dimensional affine space that satisfies the boundary condition and x 0 h is a finite dimensional space that satisfies a zero Dirichlet boundary condition okay so so as an example we started with this piecewise linear functions right so let me say i have four pieces in the space and now I have my boundary condition to be 1 at the left hand side and 0 on the right hand side. So if my x b c h is the space of all the functions that has to start over here, then it can be arbitrary uh, in the interior, then goes to 0. Right? It can also be this, it can also be this, it can also be this. So red is this. Uh, uh, x b c h then my x h has to be all the functions that are the differences between these so x has to start with zero because all red functions within this x b c h has to uh, be has to start with one so so my homogeneous version has to start with zero it can go here it can go negative it can go positive and and then it ends with zero right Okay, and uh, uh, in some sense, the red one x b c h is actually equal to all the possible. Uh, it's equal to a particular function, so it's actually equal to this function, the function that goes from one to zero, is equal to one particular blue function. That is, uh, I can tell, I can say, let's say g zero. Okay, plus any u for u within this homogeneous version of the space. So it's one particular function plus all possible functions within the linear space. So this type of representation is going to allow us to derive the matrix equation we use for finite element because it basically adds a constant term in my representation of x so now my u is going to be my g0 which is 
one particular basis of my piecewise linear function times u at x equal to 0, which is given as my boundary condition, right? Then plus summation of i goes from 1 to n of gi times ui. So this ui is the unknown. So this u at x0, so let me actually call it x0. That is a known function, right? Potentially, I can also have g. Um, so, so let me actually go to n minus one. These are the interior points, and g n is the the potential um, basic function on the right hand side of the boundary, right? So this is now my unknown. But my uh, oh, sorry, I, I think I used uh, did I use? I, sh I think I should be using. Sorry, I used the g for the test function. Let, let me use my h as uh, let me use h as the basis functions. So this is h zero. This is uh, h n, and this is my h i. All right. So my g is the homogeneous version of this space. So for any two arbitrary u within this affine space. The difference actually contains no boundary term. These are gone. So g would be only a function of j goes to 1 to n minus, n, uh, n minus 1 of h i times g i. Right. So, so this is my test function. It has zero boundary conditions. And then my u, uh, a of u g plus l of g has to equal to zero for any g gets translated by the linearity of both a and l to the fact that a of u and uh, h i plus l of h i has to be equal to zero. Uh, let me use j instead. For j goes from 1 to n minus 1. 